Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I just wanted to come and run my mouth and talk about some white people today, baby. You know, I decided to go ahead and stick my head on the other side of town and see what was going on. You know, because they, be they be doing a lot of carrying on and cutting up <laughs> most of the time, right? Um, and uh, I got, I got a, a, a few people that we need to talk about today, okay? You know, we're going to start out with a little light light. And then we're going to work our way up to the honorary girl, the one who really thinks that he's a white person, Mr. Brian McKnight. <laughs> you know, he done got rid of them black kids and went over there and got that white woman. And now he over there tap dancing, doing all the carrying on. I don't understand it. Um, his kids are better than I could ever be. Um, there would even there would be no way that I would even be able to walk around here with that man's last name the cutting up that he's doing. But we'll get into Brian. We'll get into Brian McWhite in a little bit, okay? Because it's not Brian McKnight. It's Brian McWhite, all right? Um, we'll start out with this. Dailymail.com, all right? I initially got this story from All True T. So shout out to All True T. Um, this is according to the Daily Mail. Kyle Richards, 55, won't be able to return to the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills unless she agrees to reveal her real relationship with Morgan Wade, 29. That's a big age gap. I mean, Morgan is almost 30. Do you think we would have a lot of outrage if, the, if, it, was a, if it was a man? That was 55 and the girl was 29. <sighs> we probably would. But I also think, too, because sometimes when we do think of men, it just comes with a lot of just. I don't see I don't see how not to say that women don't do it because they, they definitely do. But I don't see how trying to manipulate and control. A Morgan, where I feel like when it's an older man sometimes and a younger woman is more of a manipulation tactic. Not all the time. Please don't get it twisted. Um, even when it's an older man and a younger man in a, you know, in a, in a homosexual relationship. Anyways, so I just I noticed the age gap and I wanted to point that out. So Cal Richards is busy. I'm sorry. Cal Richards is being squeezed by Bra Bravo. Oh, God. OK. DailyMail.com has learned that the brunette beauty is being pushed to agree to discuss her relationship with the 29 year old singer Morgan Ray Wade for the sake of her series, The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And Bravo is insisting she must come clean about the secret romance if she wants to appear on season 14 of the reality TV show. The producers feel that Kyle has had has said all she can say about her split from Mauricio and it is time to tell the truth. About her dating Morgan, said a source. Kyle has beat around the bush a ton on Morgan, and it's getting old. Kyle does beat around the bush. It is time for her to finally admit it's more than a friendship. The 55-year-old sister of Kathy Hilton has insisted that she and Morgan are just friends. While the source did not explain if they were an item and broke up or if they're still seeing each other, they were clear it was more than a friendship. It was more than just friends. It was more than a girl crush, said the source. I don't think Kyle just puts a label on it, but it was something spicy, I will tell you for that. Um, Kyle has kissed Morgan in her music video, and they have also been seen uh, being very touchy in public with a photo of Morgan sit sitting on Kyle's lap making the rounds but they have never confirmed an official uh, romance and have insisted they are just friends. I'll put the link to the uh, article in the description box if you want to uh, read the rest of the uh, article. This is what I have to say about Miss Kyle Richards. I like Kyle. I think Kyle is funny. Um, I like Kyle. I did not watch. I feel like I have to say this all the time because I, I know there are going to be like a few people like, you ain't even watched this. I didn't start watching Beverly Hills as, as, as full seasons until season 10. I always knew who Kyle was. I knew who Lisa, Lisa Vanderpump was, Camille, all the other girls, Brandy, all of those. I would watch episodes here and there, but not full seasons. Um, so I can never really tell you or go into detail about the girls' personalities and all that stuff, right? Um, I understand that Kyle is the OG of the Beverly Hills 
girls, right? And I think that sometimes the girls feel as though if I've been around, especially since season one, episode one, then girl, and if I feel as if I've given a lot of my life, then that means that at some point on this roller coaster ride, I should be exempt from exposing different things. I don't give a damn who you are. If you do not want to discuss your reality on a reality TV show, get off of reality TV. I think that is part of, I, I, I think that's really an easy fix. If you don't want to discuss your reality, get off of reality TV. Simple. Um, I think there are a lot of people that do reality TV, and I'm just going to keep it on the housewives. I'm not even going to uh, go into the other shows on other networks. I think one of the problems that we're having with housewives is that these housewives are, they want to be, they want to have the fame. They want to have, some of them want to have the extra income. They like being this Bravo celebrity, but they don't want to tell their business. And I think that the road that we've started to go down with some of these housewife shows is that they don't want to tell their business. So in replace in, in place of them not telling their personal business, they'll create up these storylines. They'll lie on other cast members. They'll lie on cast members of husbands and all that mess that happens on these franchises, right? And I think that it's very, I think we just have to get to a point where if we see something going on, like with Kyle Richards, we see that there might be a there there with you in this girl. <laughs> we see that there might be a there there. There's something there with you and this girl. Are you a lesbian girl? Are you a kissing lesbian, Miss Kyle? Now we ain't gotta go into in, into the details. We ain't gotta know what y'all doing in the bedroom. We ain't got to know if your face is in the place. We ain't got to know if you face in the nation. Yeah, shout out to the diva. We ain't got to know all of that. But I do think that if Cal is not willing to be open and honest about her life, she needs to leave the show. I know it might the show might take a hit. I know it might be hard. But I think we have to get back to the, 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 the root of reality TV, and that is discussing your reality. I think it would be different. And another thing, too, that people have been saying online is that Bravo may be pissed off because they are exposing a lot of their tea. Her, Mauricio, and I guess even Kyle, I don't watch the show. You know, he has a show on Netflix, I think, Buy in Beverly Hills. I actually started reviewing season one, then I stopped. Um, but I think that Bravo, they, some people are saying they think that Bravo may be upset because they're spilling tea. And it's like, girl, how are you selling your tea over there when, girl, we paying you to tell your tea over here? Um, I, I don't think that it has anything to do. I saw some people saying this online, too, about, oh, they're forcing her to come out the closet. Nobody's forcing her to do anything. She can get her ass off TV. If she don't want to talk about what we see, then girl, you can go. We, you don't have to come out. You don't have to come out the closet. You don't have to tell us if you're in a relationship with this woman. You don't have to tell us if you're a kissing lesbian girl. But you're not going to be able to be on this show and not tell your truth. It's one thing if we didn't know what we thought we knew. But girl, we see something might be there, girl. Just start telling y'all truth or get off of reality TV. And I also think, too, one of the another issue that we have with reality TV is that, for example, I'll use Garcelle, since we're talking about Beverly Hills. I don't know if Garcelle is seeing someone or not, but if Garcelle is really not seeing anyone, and the only thing that she really had going on in her life was her raising her sons, her having conversations about sex with her sons, 
her doing her, you know, her gigs for Lifetime, then even though some people may say that it's boring, that's what she has going on. <laughs> so I think it's another thing too. We can't, we shouldn't pressure these reality stars into having a storyline because if that's what's going on in the moment in their life, then that's what's going on. It may not be this interesting, salacious story, but that's what's going on. And we need to accept that every girl or every boy on these reality shows, Housewives, is not going to have this story like a Jen Shaw. <laughs> what's her name, Shaw? Yeah, Jen Shaw or uh, uh, Erica Girardi. You know, everybody's storyline is not going to be that. Some of the girls really just get up and take their kids to school <laughs> and go have a glass of wine, <laughs> right? Um, but because we know that for, for, for Kyle, we see that it might be a situation. That's why Kyle may be in the hot seat because we see, we don't see Garcelle out here hugged up with some man. And then and she telling her coming to the show and like, Oh no, that's not what it is. But we see you hugged up with this man. Like we see you hugged up with this bitch, Kyle. Like, so what's, what's the tea? We see you hugged up with this lady. And we see her hugged up with you. And y'all sitting on each other's laps. <laughs> and y'all getting tattoos. And y'all flirting with each other. And even when, um, I think Morgan got a mastectomy. What's it called? Was it not a mastectomy? Is it a mastectomy? I was about to say a vasectomy. I think that's for the, um, I think that's for the men, honey. Let me make sure. I want to be out here calling the girl, talking about the girls had a vasectomy. Yeah, she not a vasectomy, baby. I was about to say a, 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 a vasectomy, girl. No, girl, that's for the men, baby. Um, she had a vasectomy, not a vasectomy, girl. And I think Kyle was there with her. That is a very, that is a very personal, and I'm assuming tough thing for a woman to have to go through. And for Cal to be there, like you see what I'm saying? Like it's stuff that happens with Cal and this lady where we have to, we just have to call it for what it is, girl. And we gonna, and if I was Bravo, I would be on they, I would be on Cal's ass too. We are not playing this game with you, Cal and this girl. Either you gonna come back and tell us that y'all not in a relationship, and if we find out, your ass is fired. So you better come back and tell the truth. This is a reality TV show. And I'm going to say it again for the fifth time. If you do not want to talk about your reality, get your ass off TV. We don't have to tell our business because we're not reality TV stars. Other celebrities who just happen to, we happen to talk about their business, and I could see how they could feel that it's unfair, right? But those who actually participate in reality TV and then don't want to talk about their reality, I feel like, girl, you need to go. Go back to being a private citizen and we will not have to worry about Cal. Cal, you will not have to worry about whether we talking about you and that girl. That's it. All right, that's all I had to say. That was enough about Cal and that white lady. <laughs> all right, y'all, let's move on. So let's talk about Brian, <laughs> Brian McWhite. <laughs> that's what I like to call him. His name is Brian McKnight. But he doesn't like anything associated with the dark. So we're going to call him Brian McWhite. <laughs> okay. So I guess he does these questionnaires. I don't know, these Q&As. And someone put a comp left a comment. And it said, the ones that keep saying, what about his other children? Some families are pure, pure evil and can. And that's all I could see that they wrote. And this is according to the neighborhood talk. Ryan McKnight says you have to get rid of the evil to live your to live to live the life you love. While speaking about his failed relationship with his biological children, children are the product of sin. So let's take a listen to what Mr. Brian McWhite had to say. So lastly, this week I want to big up my man right here. See, he gets it. In order to live a life that you love, you have to get rid of the evil and the negativity, even if that evil and negativity is related. We want everyone to live a life that you love. Our hashtag, that's what it means. Hashtag I love our life. But in order to do that, you have to get rid of all that evil and negativity. There's so many angry and upset and negative people out there. We want to use our platform as a place of positivity, a positivity platform. So hopefully 
I mean, who knows? Next week, maybe I'll only respond to positive comments. But we'll see. We'll see you next week. I don't really have a lot to say. Um, you know, I think it's weird that this black man has these black kids and he's estranged from every single one of his kids. However, he got this white lady, whatever she is, she ain't black. <laughs> and uh, he has had kids or a kid with her and even taken on her other kids um, as if they are his own. But you have nothing to do with your black kids. You know, Brian, <laughs> we're going to call a thing a thing. The way Brian McKnight moves and the stuff that I see him say online, he gives me that he calls his children niggers. I don't fool with those nigger children. That's what he gives me. He gives me, he, he gives me, a, he gives me that he says the, the nigger with a hard ER. I don't fool with those nigger children. <sighs> we put him in, in white folks' nose. Hello? I told, did I say this is in white folks' nose? That's why he in the, that's why he in in, in, in 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 white folks news. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> Woo! Brian, you a mess. A hot mess. You've gonna forever be a mess. Anyways, let's move on, y'all. You know what? I don't have <laughs> Congratulations, Taylor Swift's The Tor Tortured Poets Department is the second album by a female artist to sell 2 million U.S. copies in its first week. Uh, it would join Adele's 25, which debuted with 3.48 million units in 2015. Good. This is according to the Jasmine brand. I, listen, I'm not going to sit here and lie to y'all. Taylor Swift, she got some bops. I'm not, I'm not even going to sit here and lie to y'all face. There have been a couple of Taylor Swift songs where I do kind of just, you know... <laughs> Another thing, too, I wanted to talk about Brian McKnight. I just started moving my neck, and I thought about Brian McKnight. You know Brian McKnight is a loser, girl. The simple fact that, the simple fact that Brian, Brian McKnight was sitting like this so you could see that Rolls Royce behind him. Brian, fix your fucking neck. Sit up straight like a grown-ass man. Here he go leaning like this. So he wants you to make sure that you can see that Rolls Royce. I say, girl. Oh, God. <laughs> Anyways, back to Taylor Swift. Um, there are a few songs that Taylor Swift has that I actually, you know, will tap my foot to and snap my fingers. Um, but I've just never understood the hype behind Taylor Swift. <laughs> like, girl, how in the fuck <laughs> are you coming out and selling over two million copies in one week? Adele, I still didn't even get how Adele sold 3.4. I just feel like there are people like, I, I, I'm, I'm about to say something that's going to shake the table. It just goes to show that it's not necessarily about talent. <laughs> because if it was about talent and just about talent only, um, then there would be other people who would be in positions who could have record deals, who would sell records if it was just based off of talent and talent only. Not about looks. Not about any of that, but just about the per talent. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just don't get what Taylor Swift brings to the table. I really don't. And it's and it's probably and it's not for me to understand. The people who clearly she brings something because there are over, I'm not gonna say there's over two million, but there are people who purchased, stream, download um, multiple times. You know, probably went to the store. I don't know. Do they, do they still sell CDs in stores? I still have some of my CDs because, you know, I'm keeping all my CDs and DVDs because um, I feel like one day it's going to be worth a lot of money. Even if I'm not here, I want my nieces to have my DVDs and my CDs so they could probably sell them and make a lot of money. <laughs> OK. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, it is what it is. I don't understand the Taylor Swift hype, but clearly people love Taylor Swift and will continue to, uh, to support Taylor Swift. OK, now this is the story. If you're eating, you may want to close out the video for this okay all right so that's just a, that's your warning 
Say what? Tori Spelling says she can't poop or pee alone, so her seven-year-old watches. Husband used to watch for 18 years, but they divorced. I function better with people. This, this is why I be talking. This is why white people, white people. This is why y'all get talked about because y'all do silly shit like this. One minute y'all telling us you don't wash your legs. Girl, you just let the soap run down your body. Girl. Then the, then the next you telling us, girl, you are, you shitting with the door open. Like, I just don't understand. Who raised y'all? I was always raised when you go in the restroom, even if you are just a pee, girl, you close the door. Who keep, like, who? Okay. So neighbors in today's What the F News, Tori Spelling revealed that her seven-year-old son watches her in the bathroom while she poops and pees. Why? Because she wants him to. During an episode of the Misspelling podcast, she revealed that she hasn't pooped or peed alone in 18 years. Um, she was married to Dean McDermott. She says she always used to uh, use the bathroom in front of her husband. But now that they're divorced, her son has taken the front row seat. First it was Dean, Dean then it was the kid, then it was kids. Spelling 50 said of her five children, um, Lima, Stella, Haiti, Finn, and Bo. I didn't know she had five children. God damn. Bo still stands there and, and stares and talks to me like while I'm pooping. I think I function better with people. She and McDermott divorced in June of 2023. Spelling admits that she is needing her son while she while while she poops is codependency. Girl, you think? That is absolutely nasty. That that's that's actually disgusting. I don't even know. For the therapists out there, girl, tell us what is what is this about? What is this about? We know it's codependency, but like, what is this about with her not being able to go to the restroom and produce a bowel movement? or urinate without someone being there to watch her and you sit there like when when you wipe do you tell your son to turn around does he have to like like i'm just not, it just it i i just don't know i just don't know <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> all right, y'all. <laughs> oh, we can talk about this. I forgot all about them. Oh, girl, let's talk about this. All right, y'all. So I never watched this show. I remember I would always see clips online of them, but I never watched the actual show. So this is according to the neighborhood talk. Oh my God. Honey Boo Boo and her sister Pumpkin go off on Mama June amid their financial battle. You're not a supportive mother. You lost five hundred thousand uh, to a bag of effing crack. B i c t b i t c h. Well, I'm going to play the first. This is the, that was the second clip. Well, the, that was the second headline. The first headline that I wanted to read actually was shaking my head. Mama June admits she spent majority of Elena Honey Boo Boo's money on D R U G S. Elena now only has thirty three thousand dollars despite working. Despite years of working, y'all are still harping. It's gone. I used it on my drug addiction. Woo! Now listen to this. Uh. Hair lock from nobody. You took her money. She's the reason you're famous to begin with. Right now, I don't know how the I'm going to pay for college. Honestly, my mom, I don't. It's like, mama, you don't really give a f you took our money. That's the real problem here. Like, that's the problem. I, I get it. Y'all are so harping. It's gone. I used it in my drug addiction. Woo! Hey, so oh, my f God, bro. You know, multiple things can be true at the same time. I do believe at some point, what, whatever happened to us, we have to try to work our way through it and in a way kind of get over it. But I can also understand how it's hard to get over certain situations when the people that are involved, they you feel as though they don't give a damn. Like I could see how it could probably be hard to let this situation go 
because your mother, <laughs> your mother, it comes across to you as if she doesn't give a damn and she spent all of your money. Now, I don't know, you know, how much money the girl made, but I remember the show being very popular. And for her, own, for her to only have $32,000 and for her to be saying that I don't know how I'm going to pay for college, I would be pissed off. Yes, people take out loans every day for college, but in this situation where you've probably made enough to pay for college, you should not be put in a situation where you have to now go fill out FAFSA forms. I would be pissed. I would be pissed that my mother has not put me in a position where I only have $33,000 left to my name and I should have had more than that. And you don't even come across as someone who's apologetic. I spent it. Woo, girl, I would have probably got up and stopped the dog shit out of that lady. <laughs> now let's listen to the second clip. Hey, Erlana, here's 35 grand. Uh, yeah. If Mama wants to have like a relationship with me, she needs to pay me back. Because one thing I don't do is I don't hang around. No, think they're gonna steal my money now. Oh, that's right. You was the one who stole it. Hmm. So you need to pay me my money back. $35,000 could have paid for two semesters for Lana. But this is the truth to be had. If she was gonna stay in Colorado, if Brian gets done and send us to a year, are you really. You're that's what being I, negative, bitch. I am not. He's going to father. father. He's, 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 he's going to the next year of probation. I'm sorry. I'm spending $10,000. Her losing the ten thousand dollars had me back on. Who cares? Like, it's investing in your daughter if you lost ten grand. You lost five hundred thousand dollars to a bag of crap, bitch. God forbid I want to drop out of college and waste ten grand. What I do with my money is what I do with my money. I don't tell y'all what y'all do with y'all. Like, hey, Alana, here's thirty. But girl, it sounds like even if you spent your money, girl, you also spent hers too. <laughs> I think that's what a problem coming in. Yeah, you spent your money, but you also spent hers. That's why she only got. That's only why. That's the reason why she only has thirty three thousand dollars left. But she probably should have had a, a hell of a lot more than that. Girl, bitch, you spent five hundred thousand dollars on. Bitch, you need your ass whooped. <laughs> I see why they and y'all wonder why you have kids out there who talk to their parents like that. Yes, that girl just called her mama a bitch, and she probably had every right to. Girl, you sitting you sitting in front of our face playing. Fussing about ten thousand dollars, but girl, you just spent five hundred thousand dollars on drugs, and then you just spent most of her money. That's what it sounds like to me. Girl, there's no respect. The respect is gone out the window. As far as I'm concerned, those girls look at their mama just like like a regular bitch off the street. That's exactly how they treat their mother, and they probably got every right to. <laughs> mama June would have had to see me. Mama June would have had to see me outside. It would have been some furniture moving in that house. <laughs> girl. <laughs> bitch, I, bitch. <laughs> because even if Honey Boo Boo does pay for college out of pocket, the money is gone. <laughs> Elena, what, I think Elena is her government name. Anyways, child. That's all I got for N White Folks News. <laughs> all right. I'll talk to y'all later. Y'all have a good day. Bye, y'all.